Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are repotting this beast of a Paphiopedalum. This is my Paphiopedalum Lazy Isabel. I can show you the tag right here. There you go. Which has some beautiful blooms, but it has recently not been watered well enough because it was hot and I was away for a week and it's still in bark, which does terribly in my environment. And all the blooms dried and fell. So I figure this is a very good time to repot it, especially since I will actually be going uh, to the Netherlands for three weeks very soon to do a course and visit my family. So now seems like an excellent time to repot this orchid into Synthic. And I've chosen Synthic because with Paphiopedalums, the roots tend to enjoy moisture and not as much air as, for example, the Phalaenopsis. Um, which is what I've been told. This is my first time repotting a Paphiopedalum. So I have got my bag of Synthic right here. It's a different color from usual. The place I, I got it from before was all sold out. I only found in one other place and this is the color they gave me. So I have gray this time. I'm sure it will look fine. Actually, it might look better. It might look a little bit more natural than that really bright green that we have on the other Synthic. You might notice I just changed the ball and that's simply because this one is a little bit easier to work with because of the lower size and it's more aesthetically pleasing. So off we go. Let's unpot this Paphiopedalum and see what the roots are like. I think it'll be quite good. It fell off the cabinet that I was keeping it on at one point. Um, not sure why I was standing there for days. It's only toppled over and a lot of the bark fell out. So actually you can see the roots quite well inside the pot at least on the top. So here you see a root, you see a root here, and circling the entire rim of the pot you have roots. So I think there's going to be a large amount of roots in there, which makes me happy. That's all good. So we get rid of the outer pot, which I was using just to catch water after watering. And we see that we have a mushroom growing out the bottom. Let me just focus on that. That's interesting. I've never seen that before. Two mushrooms growing from the bottom. I guess that means that the bark is ready for repotting. Um, so, first things first, we're just going to kind of like gently squeeze the outside of the pot to try and um, get the... Ah! I squished the mushroom and it felt weird. Ugh, see, it's all squished now. Anyway, I'm just going to squish the outside of the pot in order to get the roots to let go of it. And then I'm going to take the thick part of the stem, like so, and pull. That went quite well. And there are the mushrooms. Weird things. It doesn't smell too great, so yes, I think it was time for a repot, so it's good that we're doing this. I hope I don't find pests. I hate pests. I have a bit of a, bit of a bug phobia, so repotting a new plant always makes me a little bit nervous. Let's start by just kind of like getting rid of the top part. I feel like these roots don't hold on to things all that much. And the bark isn't too poorly degraded, so it's not like it's turned into mush or anything. So in that respect, it's a relatively easy repot, I think. Unless, of course, we find a dread um, sphagnum plug in the middle. But I guess we'll find out. Hold on, I gotta punish my uh, my cat for scratching the couch. All right, cat has been removed and located and put down next to the scratching pole. Hopefully she'll get the message. I feel like they've realized that when they scratch the couch, I come and pick them up and put them somewhere else. So they do it just to get my attention now. Like I can see them actively looking at me, look, staring me in the eyes as they scratch. They know so well. But you know, I can't not react, I can't not I can't just let them keep on scratching the couch. So I'm a bit unsure about what to do because it's not like I pet them or give them praise or anything. I just pick them up and put them somewhere else. So I'm a bit confused about what more I could be doing. So one thing I like about Paphiopelum so far is that their roots are nice and thick, just like with the Phalaenopsis, which I appreciate because with fine rooted orchids, I always have a tough time deciding what is a life root and what is not. Oh, 
one thing I like less is that they're ginormous and therefore I'm constantly struggling with the plants and the leaves of the plants uh, hitting the wall, which I don't want them to do because the wall is like sandpaper. Every time I move my knuckles across the wall, it takes a bit of my skin away. It's horrible. If you hear any noises on the background, that's my cats doing their thing. Currently, um, Riddles is trying to fit into a box that's too small for him, but he, that doesn't stop him from trying. Okay, I'm gonna actually find a different place because I can't maneuver this plant enough with the wall in the way. I realized I could just move the table away from the wall and that would also give me a lot more room to maneuver. So that's what I've done. And we will now continue on. Constantly worried about seeing a centipede or something pop up. My worst nightmare every time I repot. Okay. So the root system is more or less clean. I'm now going to hold on the tap to clean it off some more debris. And then we get to see what the state is. Okay, so it's kind of cleaned up, as you can see from the color of here, and some water and everything else. And now we can take a quick look at the state of these roots. So, like I said, this is my very first Paphio Pedalum. I actually know quite a little, uh, quite little. I know that the, the the roots tend to be nice and hairy, as you can see here. Just take you in for a closer look, actually. So, as you can see. The roots are kind of hairy, you can see the silver sheen on them, and that's quite normal. It's just because they're used to a higher, higher moisture environment, that they help it to increase the riddles. Don't do that, boy. They help to absorb water. So I know that as per usual, if it feels nice and stiff, then it's healthy. So this is a good root over here. If it does not feel nice and stiff, then it's not so good. and everything in between. I think everything actually feels pretty good to me. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything here that... I mean, something don't look good and this... You can see this is squishy. There we go. Kind of just came off as a problem. It. There we go. Oh, I can see some tiny insects moving. Here you can see the hairs on the roots really nicely. I'm trying to see where I can find a little insect again. Maybe it'll move if I don't see much. I thought I saw something walk. So I will get the hydrogen peroxide out to try and kill anything that's left living in this root. All right, I've got some hydrogen peroxide here. Unfortunately, I don't have a proper spray bottle. I just have this kind of pump. So it doesn't cover it quite as well as I would like, but hopefully it does the job. And I know I'm not supposed to keep hydrogen peroxide in a clear bottle, someone already told me this. Apparently sunlight can interact and um, break it down into water. However, I keep it in a, um, a wooden drawer where there's clearly no sunlight. So I think it's not too bad for the few times I take it out and get some sun. Turn around, spray some here as well. So you can see it really isn't a very good coverage of the roots this way, but unfortunately I don't have a spray bottle and somehow I haven't really found one either. So I'll have to make do with this inefficient spraying of H2O2. And in case you're new to this, hydrogen peroxide um, is pretty effective in killing some pests that reside on the outside of the roots, especially small pests or snails. Um, what it does is it interacts with organic material and it starts to decompose it by reacting to it and then turns into carbon dioxide and, and water. Um, and yeah, so basically it damages all the surface level organic material, which a lot of people are concerned about what it does to the roots. So far, I've never seen any negative effects from using it compared to when I don't use it with repots, but it does seem to have pretty good effect on pests. So my thought on that is that probably the dermis of the root is a lot thicker than the dermis of most pests, so the roots don't get as much of an effect, whereas the pest gets stripped by their, you know, outer defenses and die. I don't know. This is... I haven't researched this, guys. This is just what I think happens. Um, so here we have the root ball. It looks good. Everything's fine. I just sprayed it. So I'm going to find a pot now for us to repot this into. All right, so I found my pot. 
I just have a 15 centimeter diameter pot and I have some synthic that comes out the bottom as wicks and then ends up on the inside to mix with the rest of the synthic. I'm going to start by putting a little bottom of synthic here. I have very long string synthic. They're like, I think, hmm, how long is this? They're long, okay, they're, they're long. I mean, I'm gonna double it now. Nope, quarter it. Okay, so four times this length. So I'm gonna throw that in there. I'm gonna throw this one in there. There we go. And then this one, and then we have a nice little bottom layer of synthic, as you can see, to, through which the um, roots can endeavor to grow. And then we pick up the plants. And actually one thing I haven't looked at yet is the new growths. Uh, there are two new growths right over here. This one is lar the, the larger and more mature one. Let me just actually get some more distance. Here we go. So this one's the larger and the more mature one. As you can see, it's already got quite some, some, some leaves. And this one's a lot smaller, um, but they both look like they're in good health. I, they're, they're nice and green. I don't see any dye back. And the bottom looks you know, nice and sturdy, no sign of rot or anything. So yeah, looks healthy, all good. No issues to be found here, except for with this particular root. There we go. Cool, so ready for potting. Got a pot, we got our orchids. And yeah, that ends up to be roughly about where I want it to be. Maybe I can put one more little thread of synthic down there. There we go. Oh, good. Now, I've heard you don't want to pot Paphiopelums too high up because when the roots grow in the fashion that they're exposed to air, so if they get too high up and above the line of the media, then they tend to stop growing because of dryness, is what I've been told. So I'm going to try and prevent that from happening. Please stay, please stay, please stay. Oh, that looks a little perilous. If I need two hands to be able to take synthetic out of this bag. Maybe I should have gone for the short string synthetic. I took the long one because I knew I needed some length in order to create the wicks on my pot. Maybe I should have gone and mix it the two. There we go. We've got some synthetic. And it's still in its pot. Um, yeah, so the whole pot is pretty full of root, which makes it a little bit difficult to stuff synthetic down there. But we're going to do our best. Actually, one thing we're going to do is we're going to take this up and we're going to put some synthic inside like so. That will also help to clog up the spaces between the roots somewhat to fill up. Because like I said, um, these Paphiopelums, these orchids, uh, they tend not to enjoy as much air as some other orchids like the Paphiopelums do. So it's good to make sure that there aren't too many air gaps everywhere. And kind of stuff it down the bottom like so. Yes. There we go. That will help. So because synthic is um, inorganic, it shouldn't have any problems with breaking down. And until the roots outgrow this pot, it shouldn't need any sort of repotting. I need something to stop this from falling over. There we go, that works. So you really wanna make sure that all the roots are underneath the synthic, because if not, who knows, they might just stop growing or dry up. You can see there's still a lot of holes on the side, so I gotta find a solution for that. I need to uh, fill those up. So I'm gonna try and put some synthic down the sides. Now, the trick is of course to do this without damaging the roots in any way, because eek, they are very close to the side already. It's not like it's a lot of space. Riddles, stop trying to catch my orchid. <sighs> trying to make the bottom and top connect so that it wicks water between them well enough. Ah, oh, it's 
So that side looks pretty good. I'll move on to the other side. Seems to be capable of standing by itself now. Mysteriously and magically, we got the balance just right, which is very helpful. Okay, now this side is more difficult because the other side just squashed it against this side of the pot. Okay, now it's getting more and more tight in there. So we really have to be careful that we don't break roots. Actually, I think mm, I'm tempted to leave it the way it is, even though the side is kind of like left open like this. There won't be too much air either, since it's all there's no air holes on the side, and this side is properly covered up. I think about a third, a third of the pot is properly covered. Um, the other two thirds is not, but I'm really worried that if I keep cramming more in there, that these roots are going to be severely injured. Yeah, so I'm going to keep it as is. I'm not gonna make any. Uh, Jam any more in there, just cover the top. Riddles! <laughs> Come on, boy. It's a good thing you can't jump that well. Alright, and that would then be it. And I've got. Sorry. I've got a little outer pot over here. Ta-da! Oh, it's not balanced. It's a problem with plants this big. Get the balance right. Maybe I need to put some, some rocks at the bottom. Ta-da! Please ignore the mess in the background. It's in spots. As you can see. Oh, good. Riddles is now attacking the end of my tripod as I try to move this along. Aren't you, boy? You... Hit, you got all of the food out of your bowl again. You messy cat. You messy, messy cats. Your sweethearts. Now, of course, one last thing to do is to place a tag back into the pot so we don't forget what orchid this is. I always do it with the text facing outwards in case the roots can't like grow in such a way that it holds onto it. There we go. So there we have it. All done. So thank you very much for watching. This is the first of the big strap leaf patio pelons or multifloral patio pelons I'm going to be repotting. The second one is my Swain Sithin, uh, Saints Within, sorry. And that one is huge. This is nothing compared to the Saints Within. It's It has like twice the amount of fans, if not more. So that's going to be a challenge to handle that without causing any injury during the repots. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for that, I guess. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike button. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them behind in the comment section. And if you'd like to see more uh, videos from me in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to upload regularly, but lately I've been kind of bad at that. But you can expect about one video per month at least. I try to do one a week. Um, so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.